Sometimes journalists have a reputation for being slightly, uh, terrible at video games. It seems like it's just a fact of life by now. Every writer for every site from Kotaku to IGN just all suck at video games. But if you think about it for more than five seconds, that should sound a little bit weird to you. They get paid to play and talk about video games all day. So if they spend so much time playing video games and spend so much time talking about video games, then why are they so terrible at actually playing video games? Well, to talk about that, we're gonna have to go back in time a little bit because the idea that game journalists are just terrible at video games is sort of just taken for granted by now. It's just a fact of life at this point, but it never used to be this way. So let me take you all the way back to the prehistoric era of 2017, where all of this began, with the initial release of a now critically acclaimed indie classic. <laughs> Cuphead released in 2017 and received critical acclaim instantly. Players absolutely adored Cuphead. It had these beautiful hand-drawn animations, it had a really clever and gradual difficulty curve, and it harkened back to the old SNES and Sega Genesis games that the developers grew up with. It was an instant hit and it sold millions of copies because of it. But Cuphead, to no one's surprise, is a hard game and it's hard by design. So when the games journalists entered the scene and came to take a look at this game, they weren't exactly impressed. The game was too hard. It wasn't accommodating enough. It looked good, but it didn't feel good. It seemed like game journalists weren't very big fans of this one new Cuphead game that the general public was completely enamored with. But they still gave Cuphead a good review score, usually an 8 or 9 out of 10. But games journalists will literally give an 8 or 9 out of 10 to basically every game ever made. But some of these reviews came with videos along Inside them, and one of these infamous videos in particular was about to go completely viral. A game journalist by the name of Dean Takahashi playing the first 25 minutes of Cuphead. People watched this video and were shocked to find out that a large percentage of the video is just the tutorial for the game. Cuphead's tutorial isn't long by any means. It takes just about a minute to complete at the slowest, but our friend Dean takes an excruciating minute and a half just trying to jump over this pillar. That's it, J just a single jump. The very first jump in the tutorial of the game was proving difficult for our boy Dean. A jump so simple that it's literally just there to teach you the controls. Calling it an obstacle would be an overstatement. He then finishes the tutorial another two minutes later, but then our protagonist Dean makes it to the first run and gun level, the first real level of the entire game. He then proceeds to spend the rest of this 26 minute and 40 second long video failing to beat this run and gun level. Over 23 minutes of dying constantly, barely even making it a quarter of the way through the level. Dying in such ridiculous ways that it can legitimately be hard to tell whether he's dying on purpose or not. And keep in mind, this video was uploaded on the 24th of August 2017, which was a fair few weeks before Cuphead would actually release to the general public, because Dean actually got early access to Cuphead by playing it at Gamescom Journal just for his entire opinion to be formulated off of being completely incapable of jumping over a small ledge. In his defense though, he does state that he knew his footage was basically unusable after he got it. And the only reason it got uploaded to their channel and the only reason he wrote anything about the game is because he and his colleagues thought it would be funny. But that one mistake, that one attempt at a funny joke at his own expense, created a stereotype for his entire industry that has lasted ever since. From the internet's point of view, he wasn't just uploading a bad gameplay video of Cuphead, he was a living example of just how out of touch game journalists are and how excruciatingly terrible at their jobs they are. Completely by accident, Dean had created a stereotype. And as much as I hate to be on the side of the hate mob on the internet, it's kind of hard to blame people for arriving at the conclusions that they arrived at after watching this video. This is a person who is paid to play and talk about video games every day of the week. They are technically a professional video game player, and yet they can barely walk in a straight line in a 2D platformer. Yet this person's opinion pieces regularly appear at the top of well-respected game journalist outlets. Why should this person's opinion be more valuable than anyone else's when they can barely even beat the games they play? So a lot of people thought that this video was eye-opening. Every time a reviewer reviews one of your favorite games and gives 
gives it a bad score, maybe this is the sort of performance that they were giving when they tried to play it. Maybe every video game reviewer is just terrible at video games and that's why their opinions seem so out of touch. Maybe the entire industry is just a complete lie. And once this video had opened people's eyes to what a game journalist can really look like, suddenly people started to do some digging, looking to other websites and other reviewers with completely fresh eyes. And they found a lot of the same stuff. Games journalists just being terrible at video games. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is a tough game. Old school tough. I actually found one example myself while researching this video, although this one's from after all this fiasco actually happened. Just listen to this GameSpot journalist describing SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom as difficult. All you need to do is stand on a button, and that button opens a gate for you to bowl a bubble into so you can progress. The only problem is that during SpongeBob's wind-up animation for bowling, he walks forward. That means you fall off of the button, which closes the gate and prevents you from bowling the bubble where you intended, when you intended. This is the sort of barricade that is enough to completely stump a game journalist, apparently, with him even describing this sort of thing in the game as Sisyphean, which I think might be a bit of a stretch when talking about a remaster of a game for children, to be honest. But personally, I think we might be being a little bit too harsh on the game journalists here. Because yeah, you're right, some of them really really are just terrible at video games. There's no doubt about that. But this issue gets made even worse by the industry itself and how that industry operates. Because being a game journalist is more than just playing games and talking about them. There is a massive amount of pressure on you as a game reviewer. Everyone is racing to have their article be the first review at the top of Metacritic the moment the game comes out. So your website will get the promotion that it so desperately needs to survive. So all these journalists get their review copies a week early, maybe two weeks if they're lucky, and they have to play the game, formulate an opinion, write an article, and ship it all within the space of a week. And this is just not enough time to formulate a well thought out opinion on anything, let alone a game that can be 20 or more hours long just to even finish. Take a game like Elden Ring, for example. If you've played Elden Ring, you'll know that it's a pretty hard game. So when you're a new player, you'll play it for a bit, and maybe you'll get to the first boss, Margit, and he'll just completely beat your ass over and over again. And you're like, oh my god, this game's so crushingly impossible. Oh my god, how does anyone beat this game? What in the fuck? This is the best game ever. I love Elden Ring. This game's amazing. Your first impression of a game in this short amount of time will not necessarily be enough to formulate a well thought out opinion on that game. Even in just a week or so of playtime, your opinion on a game can change dramatically. And you can't even complete most games in a week. Hence why so many IGN articles are written by people who just straight up admit that they didn't even finish the game they're talking about. And as much as this guy really does just suck at Cuphead, Nobody's good at a game instantly. Getting good at a game takes time. I mean, I don't ever recall being this bad at a game, but like, you still get my point, right? Getting good at a game takes some time to do, and it's time that these reviewers just don't have. They're not necessarily trying to make their review as accurate as possible. They're just in the rat race trying to get their review out as soon as they possibly can. And it's not necessarily because they don't care about video games, it's because if they don't enter the rat race, they lose their jobs. So the games journalist is forced to play a new game every week, never getting to truly give any one game the attention it deserves. And it's especially punishing to games with steep learning curves, or games that are just hard by design, or games that reward you for paying good attention to the environment. Which is why Rain World, a game that is a complete masterpiece that is beloved by many, is completely chastised by game journalists, and has terrible review scores on all the usual suspect websites. It's not that the game's bad, and it's not that that particular reviewer wouldn't have liked the game if they spent more time on it. It's just that the game doesn't mesh well with the way game journalists have to work. All of the beauty of this game takes time to uncover, and it's just time that the game journalist doesn't have to spend on a small indie title that they'll never think about again. But despite this lack of time, the article that the journalist writes stays on the internet forever. No matter how fast it was written, no matter how ill-informed it is, and no matter how much the writer 
player's opinion might have changed since they wrote the article. When a regular player plays a game and their opinion grows and changes over time, their uninformed day one opinion doesn't stick around to haunt them because they're not writing public articles about it that can be found on Google for the rest of time. So with all that being said, let's go back and answer our initial question. Why are games journalists so bad at video games? Well, the real answer is that, aside from a few outliers, they probably aren't. They just appear to be much worse because their industry incentivizes fast and poorly thought out opinion pieces that serve no other purpose other than to show up at the top of Metacritic. And as for Dean Takahashi, he's still writing articles for VentureBeat about video games, and people to this day are still lambasting him for being terrible at video games, because I guess some things will just never change. Thanks for watching.